Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm gonna be answering your very, sorry, there's a truck. So in today's video, I'm really excited to finally be sitting down to do this video. And this video is gonna be all about my experience with microblading. By the way, how cute is this shirt from um, L&M? Jen sent it to me, it's so nice. It says kiss my patch. But microblading is becoming more popular now and I first decided that I wanted to get it done because of my friend Megan, because she was like, it's amazing. You don't need to fill your brows in. It saves so much time. But that was all I needed to hear really. I didn't want to add a ton of thickness. I just wanted to fill in my natural brow shape in the areas that were a little bit more sparse because I was not blessed with very full natural eyebrows. I asked you guys to ask me questions on Instagram and on my Snapchat, which I'm very active on. So you should follow me if you haven't been already. I just got home from my follow-up appointment. So that's why my brows look a little dark and crazy, but I'm gonna talk about that. If you're new to my channel, I would absolutely love if you click the subscribe button down below to be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you really like my videos and you're already subscribed, I would love if you click the little bell notification button just so that way you never miss a video because YouTube can be kind of tricky sometimes. So before we start talking about microblading, I figured I should tell you guys what microblading actually is. And if I'm being 100% honest, I don't really know the details of microblading. I saw Paulina do this in her video, so I'm gonna just read you off a definition, that way I don't get anything wrong. Microblading is a form of tattoo artistry where pigment is implanted under your skin with a manual handheld tool instead of a machine and the artist will draw hair like strokes. It kind of has the same idea as like a tattoo with putting pigment in your skin, but microblading doesn't go as deep and they don't use the machine. How did I decide where to go? When Megan told me about microblading, I had no idea where to start because no one I knew had gotten their brows microbladed. I Googled like Montreal microblading, couldn't really find anything. And then I just went on Instagram and I looked up the tag, hashtag Montreal microblading. Most of the places that did it, it looked like it was done in like the back room of a nail salon. It didn't. Look Look like a very professional setting for a lot of places or it looked like someone was doing it out of their house and like since you're going underneath the the skin and like actually like implanting things into your skin I really wanted to find somewhere that was like clean professional reputable but since it's such a new thing like it was kind of hard to find but then I came across Ellie Ross Studios and if you watch my first microblading video I kind of had a weird experience the first time I think I'm gonna chalk it up to it being the holidays and people were kind of in weird moods and it was just a little crazy because I had a really late appointment first of all, it was five, so the whole building was like empty. And then when I went in, I wasn't greeted. The first experience kind of left me feeling awkward. The girl who did my brows was great, but it kind of made me feel really awkward in the beginning. So um, I wasn't 100% comfortable with recommending this place to you guys. I was gonna base it off of my experience today and my experience today was much, much better. I went at two in the afternoon, so it was, it was a good time, I guess. Like I didn't, it wasn't like weird. So that's how I found the microblading. Of course, my Montreal girls, you are pretty lucky because I'm like your guinea pig. After today, I think it was just an off day. I think it was during the holidays, everyone was crazy. It was like a really weird time, but um, I'm happy with my brows and I had the, the tech that did it was Sonia for me. Was I scared that they were going to mess up my brows? I wasn't scared that they were going to mess up my brows because I'm a psychopath and I'm like overly <laughs> to the point. Um, you guys know this about me. I really like to drive a point home and especially when it's on my face and on my brows, I will, I don't care how annoying I am, I will really drive at home. I feel like to get what you want, you have to like say what you want and make it clear what you want, whether that's with your nails or your hair or anything, your lips. I was just very, very clear about what I wanted. I had seen a ton of before and after pictures from the studio. I felt confident with their abilities and um, I mean, my shape, I wasn't adding a ton of thickness. They already had a really good canvas with my brows and it was basically, they were just filling it in. So I wasn't nervous in terms of them messing it up. Was it worth the money? Is the touch up included in the cost? So for those of you who are just stumbling upon this video, um, my boyfriend actually paid for this procedure as part of my Christmas gift this year. Um, would I have spent my own money on it? 100% absolutely. The only reason that Mike paid for it is because I'm a big believer in giving and receiving gifts that the person actually wants and will actually use so I really wanted to get microblading done it was like with tax and everything it was around $430 so I knew it was gonna be a pricey thing um, I was gonna get it done anyway so I'm like might as well get it done as part of my Christmas gift so what I've spent my own money on it 100% what is it worth the money in my opinion yes it saves so much time even before I went and got my brows touched up it saved me so much time by not having to completely stencil in my brows 
Is it better for someone who already has full brows, sparse brows, no brows, etc.? Well, microblading is actually really good for all of the above. I've seen before and afters of women or men who went in and they had no actual hair and they left and it looked like they had real, you know, hair on their brows. It's amazing. Um, for me, I had sparse areas in my brown, in my brown, in my brow, especially at the tip. Um, over here I had some sparse areas so for me it really helped fill in those sparse areas that I was always filling in with um, like my brow is. Another big question I got is, is microblading permanent or temporary? How long does it last? I kind of covered that already, but it is semi-permanent. Um, you can prolong how long your microblading lasts, you know, by avoiding chemical products directly on the brows, avoiding exfoliating right on the brows, taking good care of it right after the procedure, that really helps. But it should last about a year, and then you do have to get it redone. It's not a permanent solution. There is a more permanent option and that is called nano nano needling so they recommend only doing it twice in your lifetime and then switching over to nano needling and that's something that i would definitely consider in the future maybe you know in a year's time or whenever i need to go back to get my brows redone maybe i'll do nano needling in the future but um yeah it's not permanent it's not like you're gonna have these for the rest of your life it's not like my boobs um you will need to keep it up I also got a lot of questions in terms of my current brow upkeep because you know your hairs do grow back. For me both times, um, like my first one and my touch up, I didn't tweeze my brows uh, before I went just because I wanted her to be able to see where my natural hairs were and work around those. So the only areas I really need to take care of are just like the sparse brows at the ends near the tails. Your hair doesn't stop growing because you get your brows microbladed so if you have a certain shape that you like to follow you might need to tweeze or wax around it um, in order to upkeep the hairs that are sprouting out, <laughs> if that makes sense. But I'll zoom you guys in. So again, um, I ha I just got my touch up done, so they look really, really dark. They don't look how they're gonna look. Uh, but I don't know if you guys can see here. I have some sparse brows over here. They do look really dark now because I just got them touched up literally not even two hours ago. This time around, we used a darker pigment because she said that my brows had faded a little more than she liked. So we did go a little darker with the pigment this time. Um, which I didn't mind. I would rather look a little crazy for like two, like for a couple days, and have brows that really like pop and last, than just you know use the lighter pigment and it looks like it fades. So that's why the brows do look really, really dark and intense right now because we did use a darker pigment for the touch up. How did they prepare your brows for the procedure? So basically for me, I went in and I did not pluck or tweeze for about two weeks. I didn't touch my brows. What I did was luckily I was my own, you know, ideal brow model. Um, I love the way I fill my brows in naturally. I have a ton of eyebrow tutorials, but um, I like the way my brows look that I did them with my brow pencil. So when I went in, she just, you know, put the numbing cream on my brows and I have to wait for 20 to 30 minutes before we start and, you know, she sanitizes, puts the numbing cream and then I, you lie down and then the fun starts. The studio that I went to and I'm sure most places are very articulate and are very like precise in getting the right shape and symmetry for your brows and that's another thing I would struggle with with my brows. Um, I remember one year in Greece, um, my sister and my cousin Manoli, who you guys love, uh, one time I filled my brows in and like one brow, I'm not kidding, was like three, like it was so much lower than the other one. It looked like I was doing like that because like my brows were like so uneven. So that's another reason why I really like having my brows microbladed is because I already, I already have like a stencil so I don't have to worry about trying to even them out or making them the same, you know, height over here. That's already done for me. But like they draw on your face. I think they use like eyeliner or something. I'm not really sure, but they draw on your face to make it all symmetric and make it all perfect. And it's really, it's really cool how like precise they are. So that's how they got like decided on the shape. And in terms of the shape that I wanted, I went in with pictures of my brows that I had done on myself. Another big thing that I wanted was, let me zoom in. You can see I need to tweeze over here. But another thing that was like what I wanted is I like when it looks like a straight line here and my natural brow didn't have that really. So I really just wanted to connect and fill in the areas of my brows. These people are kind of like artists, so if you go in and you tell them what you want, I'm sure they'll work with you. And you can also see the stencil before they actually start microblading and you can tell, oh, I want a little thicker, I want a little this. So it is really, really helpful and you do have a lot of say. A question that I got the most was, did it hurt? And did they numb you? So I already answered the numbing question. Did it hurt? 
I have a high pain tolerance. I've had, you know, a few cosmetic procedures done. I have two tattoos that were both in supposedly very painful spots. I have a high pain tolerance when I know what I'm getting into. So did it feel like a walk in the park, a butterfly kiss, or like a tickle? No, but it wasn't awful for me. Um, it was easy for me to, you know, talk and like get through. Um, the, be the best way I could describe it is almost as if it was like a long tweeze. Like, you know when you tweeze your brows and it kind of hurts? Like, that's kind of what it feels like, but it really wasn't bad. Did I bleed? Um, some people will bleed, just like when you get a tattoo, sometimes your skin will bleed. I didn't bleed or I bled very little when I got my brows done. It depends on like what you have in your body. Ellie today told me that if you're ovulating or near your period, you might bleed a little more. If you're taking Advil, you know, that's a blood thinner and you might bleed a little bit more. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the aftercare because the aftercare is probably the thing that I have the most questions about because you're not supposed to get them wet. And that just, I was like, how am I supposed to wash my face or take a shower if I'm not supposed to get them wet. I think what they mean when they say don't get them wet is they don't want you submerging your face in water. If you get a little sprinkle in the shower, it's not a big deal. Um, but now I'm going to talk a little bit about the aftercare and how I made my aftercare easier. So I'm just reading the email now. You know, apply the care cream, avoid getting water, don't go to the spa or sauna, don't do intense physical activity, and avoid applying makeup on your actual brows. So I purchased this aftercare, well Mike did, but I got this aftercare cream from the studio and you're supposed to put this on your brows every three to four hours to keep them moist and hydrated. I would put this on, you know, religiously like every three to four hours whenever it felt dry or if my eyebrows started to itch because sometimes they can get really, really itchy. Um, and obviously you can scratch. I would put this on whenever my skin was itchy, kind of in like a padding motion. And it really helped with that process. So I got the specific aftercare cream by Swiss Color. I know a lot of people say that they apply Aquaphor on their brows or coconut oil or, you know, I don't know, whatever their tech re recommended. But since, you know, they use Swiss Color on my brows and recommended the Swiss Color care cream, I just listened to directions and I put this on. So you're supposed to keep your brows very well hydrated with the with some sort of aftercare cream, whether whatever the, your tech tells you. I know my first question was, well, how am I supposed to remove my makeup or wash my face in the shower if I'm not supposed to get my brows wet. Bioderma or some sort of micellar water solution became my best friend because obviously I don't want to use my makeup removing balm all over my face and then get it all over my brows and that's just going to be a mess. So this became like my best friend. I would put it on a cotton pad, use a few, take off my makeup. And honestly, I didn't really focus on wearing a ton of makeup right after a few days after doing my microblading because I knew putting on makeup wasn't the best thing. And then in the shower, again, I feel like they say don't get your brows wet, but I, I think they just don't want you to submerge your face in water. So I would do my best to get all my hair back, you know, and not get any water on my face. But sometimes it, it can happen. It can happen in the shower. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Just make sure you pat and dry. I also tried to avoid washing my hair. Well, after my initial, you know, appointment, I was really paranoid and I didn't wash my hair. I think I got it done Wednesday. I don't think it was until Saturday that I, or Sunday that I washed my hair. So um, I was, I just really tried to avoid getting my hair wet, but you know, I got a few comments saying, well, you can just go get your hair done at like a hair salon and they can do it. And if I needed to, that's definitely an option, but I didn't really, I didn't really mind. Um, it's really not that hard. Uh, the biggest, most important thing is to avoid getting it in direct contact with water. Try and avoid any blood rushing to your head, like don't do yoga or anything like that because I don't know, something about the blood rushing to your head isn't good. Also, don't go into saunas or take hot baths. You don't want your skin to sweat. You want to avoid sweating. So I think I covered pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, I will leave the information for the salon that I went to in the description box down below. I'm not getting a kickback or anything from this. It's just giving you information of where I went. If you have any other questions that I didn't answer, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I know this video was kind of all over the place. It was kind of like chatting with a girlfriend, just telling them about, you know, my experience getting my brows done. So I'm gonna go ahead and go. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day or night, depending on when you watch this. Don't forget to subscribe or click the bell button down below, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.